Okay, uh, thank you every, everybody for joining this uh, special 100th episode of Integration Monday. A uh, couple of years ago, me and Michael, when we uh, started off this program, we never thought it would take off like this. So we consistently managed to deliver one, pretty much one session every Monday. And today is our 100th episode. And I've been chatting to the different product group people whom you're seeing on the on the pictures here, like uh, to make it special, like instead of doing our regular uh, weekly webinar, we wanted to do something different. And uh, this is also the point where we received a lot of questions here and there from different people. And we thought of hooking both together so that, you know, like uh, the, the attendees can ask questions directly with the product group. And we also pre-collected some of the questions we will go through, uh, go through today. So some basic background, like if somebody has joined new, it's a, it's a weekly webinar we do every Monday, 7.30 p.m. UK time, except uh, some summer breaks and bank holidays, etc. Otherwise, the session is on pretty much uh, every every Monday. It's mainly from uh, the product group, uh, MVPs, and uh, a few times uh, large customers, they come and present about some inter interesting uh, scenarios with uh, with related to uh, integration. So these are some of the nice quotes we received uh, in the past. Like if we can see people get really excited and looking forward to the sessions, especially the, the offline ones. And we have people all the way from uh, New Zealand and Australia. I can see Wagner and maybe Daniel Toomey. And uh, they wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning to attend these uh, webinars and it's quite popular. And uh, we really thank everybody who taking time to uh, watch this one. Even in Europe, it's slightly outside the uh, working hours, so it's like 8.30 for majority of the countries. So it just shows the level of interest what people have on the integration and uh, the content around uh, integration. So we also started this Midwear Friday from beginning of the year. It's mainly driven by Kent and uh, our team takes care of uh, the logistics around uh, uh, publishing the content and promoting and all those kind of things. And again, this is going consistently for every Friday and uh, around like a 15 to 20 minutes videos, uh, which explain some interesting concept uh, related to uh, integration. So Kent, he published this uh, video last Friday. It's about the event hubs auto inflate. So if you haven't watched it, you can go ahead and watch it on integrationusergroup.com. So a couple of uh, upcoming uh, events. Uh, the next one is from uh, Glenn from Codit. So he's still going to talk about SAP connector and uh, logic apps. And there is one on uh, 10th of July, like uh, where Steve John is going to talk about uh, logic app uh, uh, apps, uh, patterns. So there's a more lineup uh, we have, and we are pretty much, you know, like it's getting very busy, and uh, as a lot of people wanted to get in and, and speak. So if you are interested, just uh, drop us a line and uh, we will always try to accommodate uh, new speakers. So on the special thing, Integrate 2017 is just a week away. So next Monday, uh, we will be having Integrate. And we pretty much finalized on all the logistics. And the event is almost sold out. Like the max capacity of the venue is uh, 400. And we are slightly above 380. And we're still receiving one or two odd registrations here and there. So this is the first time uh, we will be kind of a maxed out on the uh, on the number of attendees who are going to attend uh, the Integrate 2017. So you know, still have about 10, 15 seats left. So if you really, if you haven't uh, uh, registered, this is a last minute opportunity there. Um, of course, it's just a little bit of promo. So Visa 360 and Service 360 are the sponsors for the whole event, and uh, thanks to us. Uh, uh, that basically, thanks to all for the whole team. Like it's a big team working behind the scene to make it really consistent. Uh, and I appreciate some of the people who are already in the call uh, making this uh, happen. I think with this, uh, we can switch over to the team and uh, we can take it from there. Okay, um, how are we going to do it? Okay, next, what are you seeing now? Lex, I guess you are muted. Can you hear us? 
Yeah, sorry, I was uh, I was still on mute. Yeah, I see uh, two screens. Uh, the left part, I see the the product group members, and to the right, I see uh, your uh, your PowerPoint. So I think we have to make. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, just full presenter, because well, we can just be an audio. That should be good. Let the audio see. that should be good. I think we can uh, get started. So I think let me try to you know like uh, uh, coordinate the questions. Let's uh, start with uh, some of the questions already uh, there. Or I can also uh, leave it to uh, John and Jeff, like, uh, did you get the chance to go through the questions and you we want did. to answer, pick one. Uh, OK? Yeah, so. Do so you want to pick any one and start? Yeah, let's do a quick round of introductions first. Uh, I'll start, as I'm the one already speaking. So hi, everybody. I'm John Fancy. I'm a program manager here in the Pro Integration team, um, special, uh, I guess specifically focused around Logic Apps, but you know, for those of you who've known me a long time, I've been working on BizTalk and other integration technologies for ages. That's me. Ages? Ages. Yes. Yeah, it's a ten, yeah, ten you are. Like longer than like you are care old. to remember, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Hare. I'm the uh, group program uh, manager for Pro Integration, uh, basically Microsoft's uh, integration strategy. and. Uh, Vlad. I'm Vlad Vinogradsky. I'm lead program manager on uh, API management. Dan Rosnova. I'm lead program manager on the Azure messaging services, uh, including Service Bus and Event Hub. And I'm Tor Nordahl, PM for BizTalk. Uh, and then I'm off camera, but, but I'm Jeff Holland here, <laughs> a program manager on the Azure Logic Apps team. You are yeah. on camera, yeah. Yeah. Your hand is on camera. There he is. There he is. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's kick things off then. So, looking down, there's a you know huge number of questions, which is fantastic, and I, I think there was a few themes. So, trying to address some of the uh, some of the thematic questions, um, which is really around what what do we see as a future of integration, uh, and then specifically, you know, for Microsoft, what does that what does integration mean to us? Yeah, so maybe I should I should take that one, huh? Yeah. Um, first of all, congratulations to Saravana and to Michael for their 100th uh, episode. So uh, it's our pleasure to be on on the show today and to support you guys. Uh, we appreciate all the support that you've uh, uh, done in, in leading this event uh, and leading this activity. So uh, kudos to both of you uh, for doing that. And for all of you that have presented uh, the previous 99 sessions, thank you very much for, uh, for that participation as well. Um, I think you know the, uh, the one thing that we really want to call out, and that that uh, in order to really understand where we're going, I think we also need to uh, look at where we've been. And we've been uh, extremely busy this past year, uh, really uh, putting this team together to really uh, be able to respond better to uh, what our customers want, uh, as well as to to support our partners and to. Put a more cohesive strategy together, uh, and when it comes to application integration, enterprise integration, uh, and we did that with um, with really building this hybrid integration platform. Um, you know, we strongly believe at Microsoft that um, it, you can't just have a cloud-only strategy. You also need to have an on-premise strategy, and and we've been talking about this better together story uh, for the past year, and if. Uh, if anything, uh, this team has really worked better uh, together. Uh, you know, we've got uh, we've got API management now with uh, as a as a core piece of of uh, our integration strategy. We have Service Bus as a core piece of the integration strategy. So it isn't just really the the pro integration team. It's really uh, the entire Microsoft team in terms of as we look at um, at how we build out this this uh, integration platform. So the hybrid integration platform is something that we talked about a, a year ago when we were at Integrate uh, 2016 and talked about the, the that we were going to put uh, more investment in BizTalk Server, which is what Tord has been uh, really uh, leading uh, the efforts in, uh, as well as bringing those products together with the Logic App and BizTalk Connector to uh, uh, you know to bring those products together, and then uh, our first class experience with Service Bus. Uh, and then all of the first-class experiences that we built with uh, with API management. And now I think you, as you've seen and talked about a lot of these things over the past year, you see we've even extended that to uh, other Azure services. And 
uh, really allowing you to have a better together uh, integration story across all of those 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 products. Um, and so I think when you think of the future of Microsoft, it's 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 really um, without without also ruining the event next week in terms of some of the things we're going to talk about, which we certainly don't want to do. Come to the event if you really want to know about the future of Microsoft uh, integration, right, guys? I mean, come to the event, uh, yeah. and and that's where you'll uh, uh, we've we've got um, a, you know three days of sessions planned there, and uh, a lot of great uh, great presentations planned. So you'll you'll see a little bit more of a peek in terms of of what our plans are there. But in, but you can pretty much count on the the foundation if you really look at the foundation that we've laid over the last twelve months. You know, we're going to build on that. Uh, that foundation. So I think logically you're going to see we've invested in BizTalk with 2016, uh, getting th that server product to GA. We invested in in the uh, uh, creating our very first feature pack. You know we're not stopping there. I think Logic Apps getting it to GA. Uh, you've seen all the investment we've done with API management getting in, into the new portal, uh, and then you've seen this beautiful first class experience we've done with Service Bus and really strengthening that connector, uh, really being able to do massive amounts of uh, scale through that connector. Uh, and uh, and we've got some some cool things uh, up our sleeves, right, Dan, Absolutely. in terms of future. So, uh, so I think, you know, building on top of the foundation, we can share that uh, and uh, and then come to integrate uh, next week and, and uh, find out some more. Okay, let's uh, take another one or two general questions to help answer some of the ones that we were given in advance. I think one of the things that's clear from the types of questions people are asking is around, you know, integration is clearly a hot topic in, in enterprises today and, you know, organizations small and large. So um, perhaps uh, maybe we can go around the room. What kind of solutions are we seeing customers using our products for? I think uh, people are wanting to understand what the traction we're getting with our new messaging. I think you know we've done a lot of work, as Jim mentioned, in the last year to really um, showcase how our technologies can work better together and investing where it makes sense to actually you know bring that messaging to life with new features across all the products, digital feature packs, uh, adapters to logic apps, the, just the whole thing, service bus features and API management as well in the you know in the user portal. Um, but what kind of things are we seeing customers you know really leveraging our technologies for? Who wants to take that one? Tor, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So we do we do see as the digital transformation, and I know that's like a hype word and marketing word, but we do see more and more customers moving into that. So we see even BizTalk Server now being used more in, in scenarios that we might not have thought of in the past. Like with Featureback 1, we got a guy setting up a power app to manage his BizTalk environment, right? So for the on-call guy spinning up a send port that went down or looking for messages that were suspended and resubmitting, whatever, all done through a power app. Um, but we also see customers, and we have a case study up for that, where they connect BizDoc to SignalR um, in SQL 2016 with the machine learning functionality and being able to do more of their integration more smart and, and predictive. So there is definitely uh, a much wider usage of integration, even in the BizDoc space. Um, and then we have all of those nice scenarios where we see BizDoc customers taking advantage of the hybrid solutions through Logic App, uh, connecting their on-prem ERP or CRM system through Logic App and up to Dynamics 365 or Salesforce, whatever. So there is definitely a shift that we see, and, and we're trying to stay on top of it as we go forward and making sure that we cover and help out our customers to make them be available and, and be able to do more advanced integrations. Yeah, I, I want to also magnify this, this concept of integrations hot, right? I mean, we're all enjoying the hotness, right? All of our products, uh, when we look back, we're just about finishing up our fiscal year and got to be somewhat careful in terms of our quiet period and stuff. But uh, uh, but we are, you know, all, all of us are enjoying seeing our seeing the growth of our product and more customers that come to our our platform. And I think it's undeniable that this whole enterprise integration space is. Um, is, has has really gotten super hot from our customers' point of view. I mean, they're they can't just have siloed applications anymore. You know, they got to take these applications and they have to uh, be able to extend them out uh, and maximize their value. Uh, and Vlad, you your team has really enjoyed a lot of uh, a lot of legacy systems that are now starting to 
to put all of their APIs into your platform, right? Definitely, definitely. Um, I think that we, you know, we've seen that uh, the edge of adoption was really around uh, people exposing APIs for first party or third party mobile apps, uh, for some partner integrations, you know, where they're exposing APIs to enable, uh, you know, a small set of partners to interact uh, with your business. But now we see more and more companies coming on, on API management to manage uh, the external and internal APIs in adopting API management for cross uh, organization uh, in those scenarios. So that, yeah. What about you, Dan? Yeah, I'd say the, the big things that I'm seeing uh, are that the enterprise integration part is becoming much more enterprise. Before it was sort of team or maybe department type solutions that people were building. And then the other, and this is a bit of a chicken and egg one, but I think you you kind of hinted to it with the the better integration we're doing between our services. So they're starting to use a lot more services. So in the past, I'd see someone just use Service Bus and they'd use some sort of compute uh, to do all of their integration, but now you don't need to write code to use all the features in Service Bus because Logic Apps will give them that to you. So now these are much more sophisticated solutions. Right. They're crossing organizations uh, and, they're, and they're code free a lot of times. So that's, uh, that's been pretty cool to see and that's all happened really in, in the last six months. Cool. Yeah, I think just just kind of adding to that, um, uh, give you some insights into kind of how this sort of sausage factory works. That uh, you know, every month we we kind of look at our data, we look at uh, what we what we think is interesting and present up to our our executive team, you know, across the board. So we one of the things we we've we've really been seeing more and more over the last year as we've been focusing more on, on our better together story is that customers are you know come to come to our platform for a variety of reasons and from a variety of places but one thing that people really are appreciating and and valuing is uh, you know starting with one service and then that expanding and using our integration portfolio to help that expansion you know we have a very rich set of services in Azure we have a very rich set of capabilities on premises and it's really the, the technologies for the people who you know the owners in this room make that come to life so that you you as customers and partners don't have to figure all of this out how I connect this stuff together you know a very consistent way of using connectors in the cloud a very consistent way of using adaptive physical on-prem and a very consistent way of using messaging as well through the various APIs that we have so that you have to learn how to solve a problem once and then you can apply that knowledge to solving it you know lots of other different types of problems using the same approaches and technologies so it's been great to see exactly you know that exactly how customers have have started small and grown and you know larger customers who, uh, who may um, have been rooted on premises for many years expanding to the cloud and using our BizSoc and Logic Apps connectivity together to help them branch out and use all the great connectivity that we have to our Azure services via Logic Apps from BizSoc server as well. Uh, one thing I think uh, it'd be great if you could talk about this, Jeff. I think uh, you know, again, a question around you know how we look at this is really around our serverless strategy and how that messaging is being landing with customers. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so uh, if you're not familiar with it, there is a new, I guess, paradigm in, in computing, almost the next evolution with platform as a service called serverless, which is uh, there's still servers behind the scenes powering things, but as a developer or as an operator you no longer have to worry about your servers. So you don't have to worry about patching your server, choosing the operating system, making sure that it's secure, scaled, all of that. Um, and in Azure, there's really uh, a few core offerings that are serverless, and primarily it's uh, Azure Functions and Azure Logic Apps. Uh, and we've been doing a lot of work over the last few months messaging that out. Uh, I was able to attend the serverless conference in Austin about a month ago. Uh, we were able to do some sessions at Build. And to the question on how that's how that's landing and how it's being received, it's actually been uh, incredibly successful. And I think the one uh, unique advantage that we have in Azure in our serverless story is that we very much see integration and serverless as playing kind of hand in glove. And that's something very unique in the space. And that you know the whole idea of serverless is I need to get some calculation or some compute up very quickly. I need it to be able to scale. Uh, but what customers are seeing is that having compute in a vacuum is not very valuable. What I really need is I need compute over my data. I need compute connected to my systems of record, maybe even on-premises systems of record. And that's where Microsoft's been able to shine in that they're saying, hey, you can write your little functions, but your functions can now be connected directly to your CRM system or directly to, if you want, some on-premises SAP even. And now you're doing serverless computing off of the sources that matter to you. 
and able to connect those and enrich them together. It's been extremely uh, well received. We've seen a number of blog posts from both analysts and the press and, and so on who've really seen the value in saying, hey, integration here is not an afterthought. Integration is a real advantage here in how we solve all problems. Uh, and even just this morning, I, I was able to be on a call with someone who said, hey, we have a legacy system on premises today and it has all of these different point-to-point -point integrations and managing that all uh, with our own legacy custom system has been painful, but now we can start tapping into some of these integration solutions in the cloud and say, hey, we need to set up a new connection port or we need to do a new rule or a new process. In a matter of minutes, I can have my logic app and function out there in the cloud to scale to whatever need I, I have. Uh, you only ever pay for what you use and, and they're done. Uh, so a lot of customers are saying, hey, I could get something really quick out into production connected to the systems and APIs that I care about. Uh, so that's been an exciting wave to be able to not only be a part of, but I think in some ways um, leading kind of the, that, that trend and some of our unique offerings with uh, integration. I think, I think we talked about, last year we talked about getting to the speed of business, right? Really helping IT move faster uh, and to be able to cut down on these monolithic projects that they were fighting. And I think the serverless uh, theme has certainly helped us uh, do that. I mean, people can uh, get a project to have to integrate a new SaaS application, and as particularly if they're working with API management, they can just Im immediately start using Logic Apps to, uh, to fire up those integrations, uh, get access to the API management, throw some functions in there, for, for some custom programming and really attack those those integrations uh, in days instead of months. Uh, and it's just amazing for us to see how fast uh, companies are starting to be able to, to cut these uh, these workloads down in terms of getting them done. Um, so yeah, serverless has been a big component of that. Okay, let's get into a few product specific questions. So uh, there's a bunch of Bezork Questions, which is no surprise given the audience and given how uh, you know how long Bezos been around and the fact we just released our tenth version of the product and the feature pack. So uh, uh, again, this is this is difficult timing given uh, we're uh, integrate next week and and talking more about these things. But Todd, um, perhaps you could talk about feature pack one, which is the most recent release and how that's been received, and then what uh, what we might be thinking of going forward. Yeah, so actually very interesting. So we, we did a major shift in the team and how we do stuff, going from the time when we ship once every two years, right, a major release. One of the benefits of doing a major release is we do what we call platform alignment. We land on the latest .NET, Visual Studio, all that, which gave us the opportunity to build brand new functionality on top of the product at a pretty nice and, and, and speedy way, um, surprising a lot of the community with what we call feature pack one. Um, Building in functionality that helps our customers land and, and do better integrations. And most of these things were driven by the community, by our customers, through our user voice page. And if you do have any suggestion for what should be in the future feature packs, then you're more than welcome to go into our user voice page and add them. Um, but being able to help our customers, A, do more with the services we provide for Microsoft, and B, improve what they already have. Uh, like introducing the first step of our ILM story with automatic deployment, um, doing the CDCI, um, and then as well as taking all our endpoints and management parts, Explore OM, all that, into a... Uh, customers now, like I said earlier, building power apps, building their own portal to manage their partners, um, as well as getting the operational data straight into Power BI. Uh, connecting your already running application into application insights, etc. So we'll continue investing and working on some of the features we already shipped as these are step one. Uh, and then we want to keep some of this uh, future stuff for, for the actual event we're yeah. doing next week. But I guess that, you know, there's some interesting things in there, right? I think one of the things we're really excited to see you guys do is given how we've opened up a whole bunch of APIs and capabilities to push data to the cloud from BizTalk, what you guys can do with the product as well, because this has been 
uh, you know, a much more closed system has been on premises, and now by providing this additional connectivity through these APIs, we're already seeing some people do some really innovative, you know, great stuff. The Power App that uh, one of our customers created, which is super easy now, you know, because you have uh, easy access into the actual data source uh, system behind uh, Bizzle. Can we actually use some of these with the connector that we have for Logic Apps as well, so you can see the endpoints from the cloud in Bizzle as well, which is great. We have a, we've got a few questions that have been coming in. Okay. Uh, so I'll add one of those, All and right. then we'll pass it back to you. Um, and if you have more as well, we, ha we have some questions that people submitted ahead of time, but feel free to use the chat window. So this is a question to Dan. Uh, and Dan, the question says, we see updates for new service bus library for a .NET client to use Azure AD authentication. What will happen to the existing library that uses connection string from shared access policies? Will that continue to be in use with new updates added to them? Uh, yeah, shared access, that is a good question. So with both of our libraries, or both sets, I would say, the, the sort of the .NET framework full, our, our sort of older library and our new libraries, we will always continue to do SAS. SAS is very useful in especially high throughput messaging scenarios, so shared access signatures will not be going away. Uh, for our new libraries in particular, uh, we are looking to implement uh, MSI, Active Directory MSI, and there are a few stages through that. All I'm pretty sure everyone knows about this. Like we talk publicly about MSI. Um, MSI is uh, uh, using uh, secure managed identities for services. So as we start adding these features on, uh, as Service Bus catches up with some of the other compute stuff in Azure that already supports AAD, uh, we'll we'll enable that, but we won't require it. We will always always support SAS because, frankly, it's it's. It's a cheap, easy, secure, fast way to do auth and, and communication. Right. All right. Let's ask the Logic Apps question there. Great. Uh, I'm going to ask you one. So, uh, questions around connectors. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, we have over 140 connectors now. We're adding more all the time. And a specific question around, you know, I have a multi-cloud environment. Uh, are there any Logic Apps AWS connectors that we're thinking about or have planned? Ah, that's a great question. So. Uh, Today, the answer is uh, we don't have any out-of-the-box connectors uh, in the library today. Um, we definitely have some customers who are doing multi-cloud integration uh, using Logic Apps. Uh, before I answer any connector question, I always like to say if there are connectors for specific services you want to see, go to the Logic Apps user voice page and search for it if it's there or create a new one if it's not and add votes. I will tell you the number one place we go in all of our meetings with either connectors team or our own team to figure out what are the connectors we need to invest in next is user voice, 100% of the time. Uh, and even more so, AWS connectors, I believe there's already an entry for AWS connectors. It would be even better to say like, we want S3 or we want DynamoDB or we want whatever because AWS like Azure has lots of connectors. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely something, there's nothing available today we have customers doing it, but it's it definitely is a scenario that makes sense, right? You you need to integrate your data from the different sources that are there. Uh, so I don't have any dates or specific connectors to announce, uh, but we definitely have some on the backlog that we hope to ship soon. And for specific services that might be valuable for your scenarios or scenarios that you've seen, uh, go add the votes wherever you can, because uh, that's going to be the best way to get those connectors out uh, quickly. Yeah, I think a year ago we talked at Integrate, we talked about maybe 20 connectors, right? Yeah. And now we have how many, Jeff? It's over 150. I think this morning I opened it up, I think we're at like 162. Wow. So, I, and I, he has to ask me because every time we have a presentation, it's gone up, you know, right. five or six. So, yeah. So, yeah. I, so we are investing heavily in, in connectors. Uh, we continue to also uh, invest heavily in improving the Universal Gateway product as well. So, um, uh, and we've got some connectors that are preparing for GA as well, right, Tord? Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and as Jeff said, you know, one of the things that makes a huge difference to the connectors we ship is which connectors you guys ask us for. You know, uh, it, we, we can think of our own ideas. We think we can, uh, you know, make a difference with the, some of the features we ship. But what makes a real difference is you guys telling us. 
uh, you know, especially to internal teams, you know, we work with a lot of internal teams and the different products and everything else, but it's really what people value most here is what you guys want us to do and how you guys want us to prioritize things. So, you know, we have user voice, you know, for all the products in this room. So check that out if you're if you're not familiar with that and see what other people are asking for and see if you want to land your support to the features that uh, other people are asking for. If you have your own ideas, we'd love to hear them. Okay. Yeah, I think I just want to add one comment to that because I, I think it's sometimes people um, automatically assume that, oh, because you're Microsoft, you'll automatically have a connector to, um, you know, to, you know, Dynamics Nav or to Skype or to some, you know, some other Microsoft service. And um, we, d we have, we don't have unlimited resources, right, John? So no, we, we, need, we, we need their feedback <laughs> on, so we can go to the, to the various teams and say, oh, we need, uh, uh, you know, our customers are asking for connectors into your services, and so don't just assume that um, um, that, that we have prioritized these things correctly. Uh, using the user voice to tell us, uh, give us feedback on those connectors is critical. Okay. Um, are there any other questions you want to call out? Sure. Uh, yeah, there's a few here. I'll grab one of them. We'll go something. This is actually an interesting question, and there's not necessarily a right answer, but it's it's probably worth talking about talking out. So there is one question that said, uh, "I've got BizTalk Server 2010 doing some EDI workloads. Should I move that into Azure with Logic Apps, or should I upgrade to BizTalk 2016?" That's a good question. It depends where you're doing your workflow, where you're doing your integration, right? If it's all up in the cloud and you're communicating with partners up in the cloud and Logic Apps, awesome for that, right? But if you're doing a lot of on-prem processing and a lot of stuff on-prem, then BizTech is a pretty good option for that as well. Or if you're doing a hybrid kind of thing, then why not use both, um, depending on your need and the architecture of what you're building. So. Like Jim already stated, there's a lot of commitment across the pro integration. BizTalk is one of the products we're investing in, and Logic App is the other one. And we still see customers and new customers coming in on BizTalk as well as on Logic App. Uh, but it really depends on where you want to go. So the key thing for Microsoft is we want to make sure that we provide the features and the products that's right for our customers and what our customers are asking for. And that's why we're referring to the user voice page. So we do have a lot of customers who are still going to be on-prem for a very long time. Uh, and we have customers that are moving into the hybrid and customers that are moving all in the cloud. And, and that's where you need to pick the right tool for the right job. And I would, I would add, though, toward you, because you, I get to see your telemetry, right? Um, you, you probably want to talk a little bit also about the amount of customers you've seen move, starting to move off 2010. I mean, because we had this mixed message prior, right, in terms of was Microsoft going to invest in BizTalk? And I think it, I think a lot of customers that had 2010 were like, wait a minute, should we go to 2013 R2? But now I'm not sure of Microsoft's commitment. And, and so maybe you might want to talk specifically to the audience that still has, um, you know, customers on 2010, what you're seeing in the, in the amount of people that are, the current 2010 customers, because I know you've taken a ton of those those calls. Yeah, so we have, actually, there's a lot of customers still on 2010, even 2006, right? Way, way back. And and the concern we had for a long time was, is this up dead? How are we investing in it going forward? And I, I think we kind of killed all those rumors with Feature Pack 1, uh, just saying that we are heavily invested in the product. And we do see a lot of the customers moving up to Business Server 2016, uh, A, to get benefit out of having a new platform. It's supported till November 2022. Um, and 2013 and 2013 R2 will be out of mainstream support by July next year, right? So we do see a lot of customers leveraging and taking advantage of that. Right. Uh, but there's definitely a big move from customers running 2010. And one of the big things we've seen with the 2016 release is that we now support always on availability groups. So a lot of these customers are actually moving their Pistock machine, running in Azure as IS. So at the same time as there are, building those hybrid integration, moving a lot of the new integrations in Logic App, they're still having BizTalk running in Azure as an IaaS and taking advantage of that fast communication between those two solutions or tapping onto other services like API management. If you have that up in your own VNet today, you can expose your SOAP endpoints through API management and get the same sort of experience and, and functionality. So there's definitely a lot of customers are moving their 2010 up to 2016 or better support for high availability, um, but also moving to Azure. Cool. Okay. 
Uh, API management. Uh, one of the questions that somebody was wondering about is, you know, API management is a VM-based product. Do we do we see um, you know any uh, future? I guess in terms of whether we would provide that as a true PaaS implementation of API management. Uh, well, we can't exclude that possibility, <laughs> but uh, but I think that um, you know most customers are very happy with the private instance approach. Um, uh, so it's an interesting idea, and we definitely have been thinking about it, but uh, we don't have anything to announce at this time. Okay. And I would say, just to add on, uh, because the hosting of API management is, is uh, different than, I guess, Logic Apps, but from customers that I've talked to who use <laughs> API management, especially with Logic Apps, there are a few really great benefits that when you really get down to it and customers have to decide, am I willing to give that up? One of the great ones that a lot of people love API management for is things like on-premise connectivity through VPN and Express Route. And the hosting model with API management today gives you so many options that however you want to connect on-prem, you get it. And that's a huge deal breaker. The other one I would call out too is just latency. API management requests, I mean, when you have something sitting between your customers and your source of truth or your partners and your source of truth, you don't want that thing taking a few seconds every request to wake up. And API management today, the latency is so amazing um, that it's just like it's, uh, that's often one that I bring up where it's like, hey, would you be okay if you knew that some API requests might take a little bit of time if it was in a platform model? And usually they're like, no, I, w I want this thing to be running, humming all the time, ready to run. Right. Uh, and I think that's a really good, uh, I mean, that, that's just another reason you get some of that value out of the hosting with API management in my, uh, in my mind with customers. Thank you. I don't know if Vlad would agree. I'm almost blushing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> almost. But, but what great points, though. Uh, uh, is there any news, or uh, do we have any thoughts about enabling uh, you know, app service environments for Logic Apps? Ah, great question. So uh, I'll give some context in case you're unfamiliar with the term. So uh, speaking, it actually, that kind of is a good segue from the last one. So. Today, there's a platform offering in Azure called App Services that you can use to host websites, APIs, uh, and so on. And it is platform as a service. Uh, but they have an, a SKU of it called an App Service Environment, where you provision and pay for a dedicated environment. Uh, so it's your own servers running 100% of the capacity just for your stuff, um, which brings some of those benefits that I mentioned API management has, like on-premise connectivity, low latency, and so on. So the question is, you know, today Logic Apps does not run in an app service environment. It only has the PaaS flavor. Um, I would, the question was, do you have any thoughts? Has there been any thoughts given? I would say absolutely yes. Uh, this is a, a topic and a conversation that we have very often. Uh, and I would say for customers who ask it, usually, not 100% of the time, usually it comes down to two things that they really want. Uh, one is on-premises connectivity. Uh, is something that some people are like, I want it so that I have that VNet Express route. And the other is some type of isolation. Like, I want my stuff to be fully isolated. I want it to be just my own stuff. Uh, I would say that there are some, some uh, technical hurdles we would need to achieve to get there. So I don't have anything to announce today. Um, I would say we hope that we can solve those problems regardless of how it's hosted and how it's priced. Um, so we're working to figure out how can we have better on-premises connectivity, even more than our, our uh, on-premises data gateway, which works great for a large number of scenarios today, as well as introducing features to allow isolation and low latency and all those pieces. So nothing to announce. It's a great scenario. I, we, I mean, everyone in the room can attest. We talk about these types of things very often and try to figure out, you know, is it okay if we stop shipping features for a number of months so we could enable something like that that would be priced entirely different, would be a very different support model? Um, so nothing yet, but again, I know we sound like a broken record. Jump on user voice, uh, you know, send us tweets or whatever and let us know more so even on this one, more than just I want app service environment for Logic Apps, but what do you hope to achieve by getting app service for Logic Apps? Um, not saying that that's saying we won't do app service for environment, but we don't want to go build a massive thing for six months if we could have just spent two months and got VNet support for Logic Apps and you would have been just as happy. Okay, question for you, Todd, on BizTalk. So uh, somebody's asking uh, that in BizTalk 2016 today where we provided SQL Always On support, um, 
re required um, a number of instances because of the limitations of distributed transaction support in 2016. And in 20, SQL Server 2017, uh, that actually provides support for distributed transactions across or well, within availability groups. So does that change how BizTalk may support it in the future? So yeah, we've been waiting for the SQL team to do this. Um, so definitely, we'll, we'll, this is key things we'll look into and address. Uh, obviously, it's, it's hard for us when we do these things to force the SQL team to support exactly what we want, but this one we got through in the SQL Server 2017, uh, and we'll definitely look into that in the future of BizTalk. Okay, and uh, a question about BizTalk services, which I'll answer and Todd, you know, chip in as well, because it's it's basically like with our um, with our recent announcement of BizTalk services being retired. What does that mean for BizTalk Server? So the first thing I'll say is, you know, what does it mean for BizTalk Services customers, and, and address that. Uh, for those of you who are unclear, one of the, one of the things, and hopefully this, this just makes sense. One of the things that we, we were getting consistent feedback on is that is the you know, when would I use BizTalk Services and when would I use Logic Apps? Which is a reasonable question considering they're both cloud services available in Azure um, for you know a reasonable amount of time, particularly with BizTalk Services. Um, and the short answer is that it just doesn't make sense to have duplication of functionality where it's so you know it's so tightly duplicated that these questions come up. So we worked really hard over the last year to 18 months um, to ensure that we had all the capabilities in BizTalk services and Logic Apps to allow people to make that shift. So it felt like a natural time now to give people notice uh, required to start looking at moving from BizTalk services to Logic Apps. And many customers have already completed that, and the rest are actually in the process of completing that. So what does it mean for BizTalk Server? So to be honest, it doesn't mean anything that we're sunsetting exactly. it. BizTalk exactly. Server has its own roadmap. Although the name is similar, uh, it's just the name. Um, it's sometimes difficult, and you know, you guys can certainly help us with this. People are engaged in the community. People, uh, you know, MVPs, partners, and other people on the call, customers as well. You know, help us with the messaging of this because BizTalk as a brand is is not going away. It's not going anywhere. Uh, you know, BizTalk Services, yes, you know, it, it has the word BizTalk in it, but that's where it really stops. And for those of you who use BizTalk Services, you know, understand that already. That uh, it's really about you know the capabilities and what are we. You know what are we focusing on? This is really you know we're focusing on BizTalk, we're focusing on Logic Apps, we're focusing on integration and, and how we can make these things work better together going forward. Okay, another Logic Apps question, Jeff. Um, what about Azure Functions and Logic App support in Government Cloud? Uh, sure. Yep. So uh, again, giving more insight in case some of these terms are new. Uh, Azure has a bunch of data centers around the world more than any other cloud provider, as we are very proud of. Um, and some of those data centers are, are special data centers reserved for, for government. Um, we have a few around the world. Um, I would say it's definitely on the roadmap. We've got some stuff to light up a few government clouds, I believe. Um, I'm always hesitant to say dates, so I believe this calendar year. Um, so it's definitely coming. Um, feel free to send us a message offline and let us know which one you're specifically interested in, and if it's short on the roadmap, Again, you, if you've paid much attention to this group, we have monthly webcasts, we're active on Twitter, we do stuff like this open Q&A. We're not trying to keep you know, the goodies to ourselves so that we can come out with a big announcement and have everyone cheer for all of our features. We like to let you know along the way what we're working on, uh, in part because we want you to help validate that we're working on the right things. Um, so again, send us a, a tweet on Twitter that's correct wording <laughs> and uh, I'll let you know but definitely something we, we we know is important and we will be supporting okay Dan a service bus question uh, what's the future of service bus on premises ah yes we announced this one in January uh, the service bus the future of service bus on premises is very well defined and that is that it goes out of mainline support in January of 2018 so uh, there is no plan to replace it um, our, our on-premise roadmap involves Azure Stack, not an independent server product anymore, uh, for better alignment with the rest of what Azure is doing. Uh, we made a bet on, on that platform, and we were right that hybrid is important, but it's so important that the rest of Microsoft has jumped behind it too. So uh, yeah, for, for our, our on-prem story is completely pinned to Azure Stack. OK. Uh, question around Logic Apps. I guess given uh, the relative newness of Logic Apps, we GA'd about a year ago, I think last July, um, how would we best respond to uh, whether Logic Apps is a mature technology or not? 
Jeff, do you want to have a it is, It's a really good question, and it's a fair question um, because it has relatively new. I think just just this month we will hit our two year. No, one year, one year. GA? Yeah. It's unreal. That's not very much time. Like, we haven't even been generally available for a full year yet. Um, and part of the reason it's unreal is because uh, the adoption that we're seeing and, and the scenarios that it's able to achieve. Um, so I guess how I would respond to that, if you're in a situation and someone's like, you know, is Logic Apps really enterprise ready? Is this just Microsoft's latest experiment that may go away in a few years? Um, the first is actually if you go to customers.microsoft.com, and I would do double quotes around this word so you only get these ones, but if you do double quotes and search for Logic Apps, there's, I think, four or five customer use cases there. We just published one last week. Um, these are from ma major companies, energy companies. We've got some who uh, do manufacturing who have published a use case. Again, we've only been generally available for a year, talking about how they've been able to use Logic Apps and the benefits that they've seen from it. So we do have a number of customers even some that aren't on that site yet. Uh, I know there's a few blog posts floating around. We've got some great partners who've helped share stories of successes they've seen and posted it as well. Uh, so just go look at what other people are saying. Um, the other one I would say is, is definitely this is something that is here to stay. Uh, Logic Apps, um, we have built this very consciously using our learnings from running services like BizTalk Server, which is the best piece of integration software to ever exist. Um, and <laughs> we've used those learnings to help us build a very powerful cloud platform. And, and uh, not only is the customer adoption, I think, worth calling out, but I think something exciting for us here at Microsoft is the amount of excitement that has been uh, seen from other teams here within Microsoft. So I, I don't necessarily need to say product names here. I don't, I don't know if this is the right setting for that, but there are, I guess the one that's public enough is services like Microsoft Flow that are built entirely off of Logic Apps, and there are probably about a dozen other very large products and services that Microsoft is offering their customers, and they are choosing to make a bet across the company to say, when we need stuff to be connected together, when we need stuff to be integrated together, and we can do it in the cloud, you were going to use Logic Apps to do that. So. If Logic Apps ended up not having a good SLA or if we went away, you would see the ripple across the company because of all of the other dependencies that we have. So uh, we are definitely just getting started. I say that because we haven't been around for very long, but also because we think we are just getting started. There's more goodies to come. Um, but, but honestly, take a look at some of those customer studies. Uh, we've got some phenomenal people in the community. Many of you are on this call, uh, and I'm hoping I get to see a lot of you next week too who've been posting great blogs um, on their experiences. Um, and again, it's, it's, uh, we, we built this very consciously with our learnings from previous products to handle the scale, to handle the scenarios, to handle the patterns that matter most. Um, and we're just running as fast as we can to, to continue to increase those capabilities for what you need. Yeah, and what, one of the other great teams, you know, besides all the product groups and everything else, which is fantastic to see internally, one of the great teams we've been working with, and they'll actually be with us next week as well as our own MSIT. So this is our own internal IT organization, just like you guys. We have IT to run as well that runs our business, sells our products, manages our supply chain, a whole bunch of different things. And they'll actually be doing a talk specifically on this and their journey to Logic Apps and some of the best practices that uh, they want to share with uh, with everybody as well. So, yeah. you know, it's been a great Powerful. internal partner uh, as we've been advancing the capabilities in Logic Apps. Yeah, and though we don't really talk, you know, publicly about numbers in terms of, you know, how much uh, activity and stuff are going through individual products, you know, we will tell you that a tremendous amount of our engineering efforts over this past six months has been to shore up our scalability, uh, you know, to beef up capacity. Um, thank you for making us yeah. focus on that. <laughs> um, you know, uh, the amount of uh, uh, business that you guys have put on Logic Apps uh, has, uh, you know, we have a whole team, right, Jeff, dedicated to nothing but making sure that uh, we're way ahead of the curve when it comes to the amount of compute that's going to be necessary. Uh, we're constantly looking at, at uh, latency times and, and uh, figuring out ways to optimize the platform to make it faster. Uh, and that's all because you guys have, have put some mission critical workloads and continue to bring massive amounts of, uh, of workloads across the what 20 plus regions we're in now. Yeah. Uh, and, and to go back to the, 
you know, the government cloud and those kinds of investments. We uh, every every three months we have a planning session where we talk about which clouds we want to go to. They are a massive amounts of investment that we have to make in order to move to those uh, those I'm sorry those regions. Uh, so we we are constantly juggling things around and but we're doing that again based off of where we're seeing the growth and where we're seeing the demand and where we're seeing people say I'll move my workloads if you bring it to this region or that region I will I will uh, bring it so we need that input from our customers and partners that are saying boy I really would um, be able to get this government account or that government account if they were in uh, in that region, uh, we you know that that could tip us to say, oh, maybe we should do that before these others, because the the right now we're getting so much demand from across the the, the planet that we are literally um, scrambling to just try to make everybody happy, right, Jeff? Yep, it's true. It's you get the benefits of serverless, but our team has to manage all those servers, yeah. and uh, <laughs> it has been a task to keep up with the demand. It's it's we're. We're, we've been able to do it, but as Jim mentioned, we can't just build cool stuff all the time because it's like, well, we got to build these servers that everyone's running on. Right. So uh, it's been fun. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have something for me? No, I just had five minutes left. Oh, okay. I yeah. thought you were like, I, I got, I got a good. Uh... Are there any other questions in? The... Uh, no, it's. Uh, there's been. I mean, I will mention. There's been. We just got one more. Uh, but it is worth calling out that on chat, just some some people saying. Uh, you know, great job, a load of Tord, stuff like that. So uh, it's a good community. <laughs> He's got a good fan. fan yeah. <laughs> the Tord fans are yeah, I love them. I don't know if you have a nickname for them or anything. Yeah. Tordies or. Tordies, yeah. <laughs> Tordies. We got a bunch of Tordies online. Okay. Good. Uh, so I just pasted yeah. the only other one that's uh, uh, it. What question, Jeff? Uh, the what? Okay. Question related to the bunch of questions people are asking about the healthcare and the what's the plan, like, uh, uh, you know, given the scenario, like, not a lot of healthcare companies want to move to the cloud and they want to stick to it. Yeah, since we, yeah, good question. Since we just have a couple minutes left, let me address it kind of a little higher level. Um, one of the things that the team is starting to look at is how can we improve our vertical strategy? Uh, so now that we've got, um, really good functionality across the platform in terms of uh, great features in terms of our workflow and conditions and how we can how the engine works now the team is really challenged with how do we put together solutions for verticals healthcare is one that uh, John is is driving very hard on and very passionate about so um, yeah I, and you know, this is something that we're thinking about, to, to Jim's point. One thing that we, we've really focused hard on, and hopefully you, you've got this message because I'm probably saying it for the tenth time in this call, is we focused really hard on providing uh, a lot of general purpose integration capabilities across the board. That's not even just logic apps. With that integration with service pass and API management, and build talk, et cetera, it's across the board, we want to make sure we had a stable, solid platform for everybody to build uh, mission critical integration solutions on top of. So as we look forward, it's like, well, you know, are there opportunities to provide industry specific um, capabilities on top of that, whether it's messaging standards or capabilities such as the kind of crazy performance that uh, we were just talking about a minute ago, are all interesting areas that we're looking at focusing on. Uh, again, you know, putting it back to you guys, you, you know, healthcare is obviously an interesting one, it's, it's where the questions have come up. You know, are there others? Are there, you know, do you see these types of workloads being attractive for customers to move to the cloud? And if so, what does that look like to you? Um, you know, as I said, you know, we're running out of time now. Uh, you know, a lot of us are in London next week. If you're there as well, we'd love to meet you face to face and deep dive on some of these things. If you have specific asks and specific customers or verticals, we'd love to love to talk to you more deeply. If not, just send us email, um, you know, logicats email at Microsoft.com. Uh, or you know, you, yeah, I think all of you have got Todd's email address already and probably Dan's as well. So uh, you know, with that, I think we're probably running out of questions now and time as well. So back to you, uh, Saravana. Sorry. You know, one last thing. So again, thank you for joining us today. Um, we are bringing a, a very large team uh, to London next week. Uh, we are going to be available, you know, for side meetings. And yep. uh, I know uh, Tord is looking for somebody to buy him a beer while he's there. So, um, you know, but we are seriously, we are bringing uh, quite a few people uh, to London, um, as you guys can see through the speaker list. Uh, so we'll be able to answer all of your questions and get more of your feedback. Uh, there, but we want to thank you on behalf of Microsoft. Want to thank you for joining us today, and again, congratulations uh, on your hundredth episode. Hundred episode, yeah, it's a big deal. Great, thank you.
Okay, great. Thank you, everybody, for joining and taking your time to answer all the questions. Thanks, everyone, and hope to see you all next week. Bye-bye. Yeah.